Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to diagnose DPF and differential pressure sensor. As you already know, when engine is running, we have different type of emissions created by the engine, including carbon monoxide, oxide of nitrogen, hydrocarbon, and PM or particulate matter. So right after the exhaust manifold, we have the caddy installed to convert most of those harmful gases to harmless gases. The only thing is CAT is effective on carbon monoxide, hydrocarbon, and oxide of nitrogen, if you have three-way CAT, obviously. But the problem is about uh, the particulate matter, because CAT cannot filter or cannot convert particulate matter, because on diesel engine, we have particulate matter created on exhaust gases as well. We need to come up with a solution to minimize the amount of particulate matter that we are releasing or discharging to the air. So what happens, DPF, which is diesel particulate filter, is actually going to work as a filter to trap all the particulate matter after the catalytic convert. When exhaust gas is going through the cat, we will have some harmful gases converted to harmless gases. And right after that, we have the DPF to trap and to filter the particulate matter as well. But it's really important to know how we can diagnose the DP because generally DPF works as a filter. There should be a mechanism to monitor the DPF if there is too much soot inside the DPF. All right. So it's DPF is not like any other filter that we can just replace it because it's too expensive or we can clean it. There is a mechanism to get rid of the uh, trapped soot inside the DPF and that's actually by burning the soot inside the DPF. But basically there should be a way to monitor how much soot we have already inside the DPF and that's actually by using differential pressure sensor. So as you see this line is connected right here after DPF and there is another line upstream before the TPF. So these two are connected to differential pressure sensor. I will show you the dif differential pressure sensor up there as well. Uh, so that sensor is actually checking the difference between the pressure before the DPF and after DPF. And of course, if we have too much soot inside the DPF, uh, there's gonna be a higher difference between upstream and downstream on uh, DPF. All right. Uh, I'm going to show you the differential pressure sensor and how to inspect it. And there is a really important step for DPF diagnostic and that's the regeneration. But over the time, when uh, there is too much soot inside the DPF, when ECM detects this amount of soot uh, by monitoring the differential pressure sensor, it will perform the regeneration by actually burning all the soot inside the DPF. If automatic regeneration doesn't happen, we need to perform the manual regeneration. So I will show you how to monitor the amount of soot inside the DPF by scan tool, uh, how to diagnose it and how to perform the manual uh, regeneration with the scan tool. Uh, on this car, differential pressure sensor is located right here. And as you see, there are two hoses connected to differential pressure sensor because they are coming from upstream and downstream of DPF. All right, here is a connector. One is the power supply, the other one is ground, and one is the signal. So basically what we can do here, we can inspect the power supply coming from the ECM with the multimeter, just select the voltage. And check the power supply just like this. As you see, we should have five volts. So if you have this five volt, it means this one is okay. You're gonna need to inspect those two holes as well because obviously if there's any leakage in here, we won't be able to measure uh, the proper difference on pressure before and after the DPF. Uh, all right, so I have connected the scan tool. Let's see what sort of diagnostic we can do on the scan tool for this car. All right, let's select the car. Uh, European. Yep. <laughs> Let's go for system selection because we do not need to check the engine for this all right right now engine is running let's go for reading data stream for 
finding anything useful for DPF diagnostics. Uh, the first thing that we have here is difference in pressure between particulate emission filter input and output. So this one is actually measuring the input and output pressure and showing the difference in pressure. So if this difference goes higher, the differential pressure sensor output voltage is gonna go higher as well. So as you see here, total weight of suit in particulate filter, this is 5.65 gram. So this one is actually how much suit we have already inside the particulate filter. And obviously if this amount goes high enough uh, for the ECM, uh, for performing the regeneration, when you drive, regeneration will start. But uh, regeneration is not gonna start happening anytime that you are driving the car because uh, during the regeneration, the temperature of the DPF is gonna go really high. So ECM monitors the, uh, the car driving conditions because you have to drive at longer distances, uh, at higher speed, not too high a speed, but uh, if, you are commute, if you are commuting in short distances and you are not driving at, uh, you know, higher speeds, obviously ECM will not meet the requirement for performing the regeneration. And even if the suit level inside the DPF goes high, uh, ECM won't perform the regeneration because obviously a uh, car doesn't meet the uh, condition. So in this case, if you have a fault code for too much amount of suit, if you have a fault that auto regeneration is not happening, you have to perform the manual regeneration with the scan tool. For doing that, you have to go back special function other special function uh, particle emission filter forced regeneration okay so this is what you do with the scan tool forced regeneration vehicle stationary forced regeneration vehicle moving so if you are doing the vehicle stationary you have to go through the first one as you see regeneration must only be started outside because you need to make sure there is enough ventilation for the car. The temperature goes really high. This operation causes very high exhaust temperature. Before starting this operation, check that the outside of the exhaust system and the surrounding areas are clean and all other situation as well. The coolant temperature uh, must be uh, more than 65 degrees and less than 100 of course. Uh, fuel tank level should be at least uh, a quarter full. The accelerator, brake, and clutch pedals are not pressed during the operation. Okay, if you if you meet all these and the transmission, if it is manual on the neutral, if it is automatic transmission on the park, if you press this one, ECM will start performing the regeneration after uh, providing all these conditions. The operation is performed as follows. Start the engine sending off the command by diagnostic equipment, your scan tools, uh, the engine will alternate phases of idling and high engine speed for around 10 minutes. Uh, at the end of the regeneration, the diagnostic tool will display the result of regen regeneration. And what you will see, uh, because right now, I'm not going to do the regeneration, this is exactly what's going to happen, uh, but after performing the regeneration, you need to go back to uh, the live data and check the amount of suit that uh, we had uh, inside the DPF before performing the regeneration. And you want to make sure that that amount is something close to uh, zero. If it is close to zero, it means your uh, DPF is already cleaned and there is not much suit left inside the uh, inside the DPF. But if you are driving at long distances at higher speed, yeah, DPF regeneration will happen automatically with ECM and you don't need to worry about anything. The only thing is if you're just commuting in short distances, you have to uh, perform the DPF regeneration with a scan tool and uh, by considering everything uh, I just told you. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find all this information helpful.